Barbados tight-lipped on whether it will sell its majority stake in Liat and in sport, the political unrest in Venezuela forces the cancellation of an international friendly against Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Ricard Roberts and this is Caribbean in 10 for Thursday, May 16, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. Welcome to this year's 50th Caribbean Broadcast Union Assembly on the island of San Andres. San Andres is a small archipelago located in between Jamaica and Panama in the Western Caribbean Sea. A lush, exotic island rich in culture, history, gastronomy, and breathtaking scenic views. Known for its beaches and seven colored crystalline waters, the island of San Andres will be proudly hosting this year's event. CBU members will enjoy top-of-the-line accommodations for an unforgettable experience in San Andres, connecting Caribbean nations through this year's 50th edition of the CBU Assembly. Barbados's Prime Minister Mia Motley is tight-lipped on whether the country intends to dispose its shares in Liat. Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown last week confirmed that his government has submitted a request to purchase the 49% stake in the regional airline and he was waiting a response. But Motley, whose government is Liat's largest shareholder, said yesterday that she had no intention of having any discussions on the issue in the public domain. She said her focus is on ensuring reliable and affordable regional transport. The government of Barbados, at the appropriate time, when discussions are concluded with stakeholders at all levels, will speak to the country. Suffice it to say that by whatever means we choose, whether existing or other, there will be a commitment to providing affordable, reliable air travel between those in the Caribbean, because without that, we accept that there will be a serious constraint on our people. In addition to Barbados and Antigua and Barbuda, where the airline is based, the other major shareholding governments are St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica, and more recently, Grenada. In total, they have just over 94% shareholding interest in Liat. The remaining shareholders are private companies and other Caribbean governments and employees. Six of the eight prisoners who escaped from a prison in Trinidad and Tobago have been recaptured. Stefan Austin, Kerry Valentino, Joshua Janet, Mikhail Mohammed, and Brent Johnson were held yesterday in Las Lomas. Atiba Seeley was recaptured around quarter to 11 this morning in the same Las Lomas area. Olatunji Denbo and Michael Findlay are still at large. The eight had had escaped the Golden Grove prison in Anruka early Wednesday morning by cutting through two steel bars in the cell they shared and then jumping over two perimeter fences. Seven of them are on remand for on murder charges. Speaking to the media last night, Acting Superintendent Brandon John, who has been coordinating the operational side of the search, said police had information the eight were all together at the house where the first five were held. We have information that they are still in the area here. All eight of them grew together in the area here in a house. The officers received information, went to the location, arrested five, and then we locked down the entire area. So we knew that they are still in the area here. That's why you have active search going on. If you listen overhead, you will hear the drones overhead, you will hear the chopper overhead. And we're going to continue this into the night until we have them in this. We're not going to stop them. Meantime, Assistant Commissioner of Police MacDonald Jacob says all resources are being utilized to apprehend the other fugitives. Caribbean countries have been told that they need to move quickly to adapt to the changing labor market. The advice has come from the Director General of the International Labor Organization, uh, Guy Ryder, on the heels of the Caribbean Labor Minister's meeting in Barbados this week. The Ryder told CMC that technology demographics and climate change are quickening the pace of change in the labor market and the Caribbean needs to keep up. I think the key question for the Caribbean labor markets is what is their capacity to adapt 
and to take advantage of the new arising conditions. And I think above all in this era of digitalization, uh, we have to look at the question of skills and capacities. Um, one of the issues which has been discussed, I think, more probably than any other in our meeting here uh, in the last two days, has been about the issue of skills development and the notion of lifelong learning. The fact that as the pace of change is accelerating in the world of work, I believe it is no longer logical or possible to think in a sequential way that at the beginning of our lives we learn and are educated for 20 or 25 years, and then we work. That won't last any longer because whatever you learn at the beginning of your life... And stay with us, your Midlands board is next. Back is now time for sport. The political crisis in Venezuela has forced the international friendly between that country and neighboring Trinidad and Tobago to be cancelled. TTFA President David John Williams expressed his disappointment now that the senior men's squad will be forced to play their first warm up mere days before their crucial Gold Cup opener. Following the cancellation of the friendly between Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago on May 29th, TTFA President David John Williams has expressed a disappointment since the two sides won't be in action with one another. The match was being used as a warm-up to prepare TNT for the CONCACAF Gold Cup in the month of June. In his public knowledge, um, the bit of instability that exists in Venezuela and uh, TTFA and the Venezuelan Football Association, so it fit to cancel the game. I mean, there's nothing that we could have done about it. Uh, it's disappointing, but at the end of the day, um, it is what it is, you know. Since the national team is in dire need of match practice, John Williams says a warm-up has been arranged for the players so they can be ready for the prestigious CONCACAF tournament. We're making up for that game by playing Canada a closed-door game in Los Angeles on the 11th of June, which is seven days before our first World, uh, World Cup game. So, yes, um, there's the cancellation of the Venezuela game, but we have put things in place have a team against Canada to make up for that team. And that report from TV6's Vinod Nawani. Over to cricket now, Fidel Edwards grabbed two wickets to help Hampshire take control of their county championship division. One match against Warwickshire yesterday. Now responding to Hampshire's 354 at Edbatchstone, Warwickshire went from 135 for three to end the second day, struggling on 184 for seven, still requiring a further 174 the lead. South African fast bowler Kyle Abbott snatched four for 43, while his new ball partner Edwards supported with two for 41. Opener Dominic Sibley held the innings together with an unbeaten 95 off 215 balls in a shade over five hours, put in 40 on the third wicket with Adam House and a further 47 for the fourth wicket with Liam Banks. That's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.